Hello everybody, Matt Lake TA here. I'm gonna do a quick breakdown of the update rate optimizations plugin today. Um, so if you've downloaded it from the store or wherever you've got it from, uh, this video will break down basically everything on how to set it up, what all the nodes do, and um, hopefully allow you to optimize your characters thoroughly. So this functionality has been in Unreal for quite a while, but now I've exposed it to Blueprint, which makes it a little bit more accessible. So first of all, if you've got it downloaded, make sure you've got the plugin enabled by going to Edit, Plugins, and then you'll find it under the Animation category. We've got Update Rate Optimization Blueprint. So if we go back to our Content Browser and we head to our Plugins folder, if you can't see this, go to Settings up here, and then you'll be able to see Show Plugin Content just down here on the right. And then I've provided a blueprint called Blueprint Update Rate Optimization Example. If we open this, we've got all this content, okay? So these in blue right here are all of the nodes that are available from the plugin. So that's them all there. Now don't get overwhelmed. There, there might be quite a few there, but you technically only need three to get this to work, okay? So these, uh, these two must be run. So we need to enable update rate optimizations on a skin mesh, and then we need to set the mode. And then depending on the mode that we set, we pick one of these two blueprints, okay? And then we've got some examples over here, which I will break down in a moment, uh, but we'll just quickly go over all of the nodes that we have in the plugin. So our first node here is set enable update rate optimizations on skin mesh. I've added tooltips to all of the nodes, so hopefully they have good descriptions on to let you know what they do, but this will enable it on the skin mesh. This will enable the system on the skin mesh and you can start to use it. The second function here is the set update rate optimization mode. So the URL works with two separate modes. So the first mode is called visible distance factor thresholds. So this is based on essentially screen percentage. You can choose it to have different update rates depending on the screen percentage. You may be familiar with using screen percentage to switch between LODs. It's basically that, okay? The second method is called LOD to frame skip map. So this method is actually tying updates to specific LOD levels. So you can have it LOD 2 is skipping 6 frames and LOD 3 is skipping 12 frames and things like that. So then, as I said, those two are the ones that you need to run. And then we've got uh, these two, which are dealing with the visible distance factor thresholds behavior. And then these four, which are dealing with the LOD to frame skip. Okay, so these are quite simple. This is setting some... Um, setting the visible distance factor threshold, and then you can clear the values there. Again, you can set the LOD to skip array, um, which is a wrapper around the LOD to skip map. So this is a direct C++ call, this one. Uh, but it's a little bit awkward, which I'll, I'll show in a moment. But basically, you can use this one node, and it'll work totally fine. We've got a clear LOD to frame skip map, so you can clear all of your settings. And then if you want, I've also exposed it so you can set specific LODs to have specific values. And then we've got some additional controls over here. So we have set interpolate skip frames, which you can turn on and off, which means the frames that are skipped because of the optimizations, you can turn the interpolation between those frames on and off. We can also set a max eval rate for interpolation. So this is essentially a threshold. Uh, okay, maybe I, after skipping 10 frames, we'll start turning off interpolation. And it's basically like a barrier to break through, which is very useful. And finally here, we have the set base non-rendered update rate. So this is whenever a skinned mesh is off screen or not rendered, such as on a server, it has a base update rate and you're allowed to customize it with this node so that's exposed for you and then here we have a bunch of get values so we're getting whether it's turned on the update mode and the, the factor values the current max distance factor which is quite useful for setting these ones uh we've got some settings here for getting the array the map and the index from the lod frame skip and then we've just got states for um getting the base non-rendered update rate if we're skipping for interpolation between frames and the max eval rate. And then finally, we have a get current update rate, which is really useful for debugging what a specific skeletal meshes update is at this very frame. So let's dive over to some of our examples. So we've got um, a begin play here. So we've got two events. So we've got the LOD skip setup 
or the visible base distance factor and if you just click them the nodes are here and we've got the other one just below so if we walk through this if i just zoom in again so the first node as we've always got we've got to enable the update rate optimizations so that is on there and then we're setting a mode okay so we're using the lod to frame skip map in this example and then we are using the lod to frame skip array node here and we are plugging in a make array so you can literally just type off and do make array and what we are doing here is essentially the index of the array is the lod value okay so we're at lod 0 lod 1 lod 2 lod 3 lod 4 then we have a number of frames to skip so we're going to skip 0 on lod 1 uh, lod 0 sorry we're going to skip 3 on lod 1 we're going to skip 6 on lod 2 we're going to skip 12 on lod 3 and 15 on lod 4 okay and then that's all you need to do you could technically end that there and this will start working which is really cool but we're going to add some extra stuff on here so we're going to skip interpolate frames after the threshold of 15. Uh, so basically our lod 4 will stop interpolation okay so we've got this one plugged in so let's take a look at it shall we So you can see we're at LOD4 here, so that character is actually stepping there. So there's no interpolation on, really cool. And as you get closer to the character, when it switches through the LODs, the update rate changes. And becomes more optimized. And it's based on the LODs that are switching. So if you use a um, tilde, so you do a.visualizeLODs and turn that on. You can see we've got LOD value 4 there, and then the threshold to 3, so we're switching between 4 and 3 there, and you can see we're going through those thresholds, and it's immediately at the jump. Really cool, awesome. So that's the first example. Now let's switch over to our other one, so visible distance factor threshold. Let's take a look at this. So this one's very similar, so we're updating the, um, we're enabling the update rate optimizations, but this time we're setting the visible distance factor thresholds, okay? So now we're using the set visible distance factor thresholds node, and it, this takes an array again, okay? So again, we can just pull off it and make array. But this time, it's the reverse, okay? So the, the index in the array is how many frames are being skipped. Okay, so this is going to skip zero frames. This is going to skip one frame, two frame, three frame, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and then this number is the screen percentage. So we can have a much more granular fall off, like a linear gradient going through these percentages going down zero, one, two, three, four, compared to the previous one, which is we're having to do jumps because we only have five, six lods here. Whereas this one, we can smoothly gradient through, okay, we're dropping three frames, dropping four frames, five frames, six frames, eight, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And again, we could end that there, but we're, we've got the same value plugged in right there. So we could just compile this and click play. If we take a look at the character, again, if you look at the character, when I've done that a.visualize um, nodes, you can see this max distance factor value is actually here on the a.visualize um, command. I have exposed that value as one of these commands. You can get the get max distance factor from this command here. In fact, let's print that now. So on the right here, I've uh, got all of the values that we can print out and kind of diagnose. So if we just set up a tick and we want the max distance factor, let's plug that one in, compile and click play. So we can see that number right there is matching this number that we're printing up here. And as we get closer, we now have, we're at 0.15 right there. So 0.15, if we go look at our, our map that we've got here, 0.15 is pretty much all the way at the bottom. So we're actually much lower than we need to be. So these numbers need... Uh, shifting down quite a bit because that's 0.1% there. So make sure to take use of that command to print and kind of see what your settings should be. 
And as I just mentioned, we've got all of these values over here. So you can get the current update rate, to, um, which is quite useful for debugging what the current value is. And as well, we've got the actual frame skip settings, which you can print here and here and here. I will just briefly mention some of the extra nodes we had because we don't have to use the array. We can use the set log to frame skip map. So this works pretty much in the same way. But this time, instead of the index being the LOD, basically the key value is the uh, LOD index. So for example, this would be LOD zero, and then we could skip zero frames there. Then we could do LOD one, skip 20 frames. But because we're actually defining the LOD index this time, you can actually just skip skip LODs entirely. So you could skip zero, one, two, and three, and only set it for zero and three, okay? So that's how it's set up in C++, but it's a little bit more simpler just to do an array. So there is an array version, and there is a LOD to frame um, index. So if you wanted to set a specific index, in theory, you could do several of these chained together, and you could do LOD index one, LOD index two, LOD index three, um, and do five and 10, kind of, kind of like that way, um, if you want it. So it's all exposed, so you can set it up however you want. And one note I will just mention on this value here is this is how many frames are getting skipped, okay? So it's, in this example here, LOD1, we're skipping three frames and it's updating on the fourth, okay? So that's what that number is based off. And I think that's a pretty good run through of the, the toolkit. It's pretty straightforward. Again, as I say, you make the first node, which is to enable the update rate optimizations. You set the mode and then you pick one of these two methods to use. And then you put in some settings and it'll all just start plugging away. So like I said, the main benefits of the visible distance factor is you can be a lot more granular. Whereas the LOD optimization method is based on the LOD, so there'll be quite jumps or quite significant jumps between them. Um, but that depends on whatever you want to set up. You could just shave off one frame every time. That's up to you. And control is now entirely in your hands. And if you've got any problems, reach out to me at MattLakeTA on Twitter, on LinkedIn as well. We also have a Discord server called the Tech Anim Corner. I'll put a link in the description come and join some like-minded folks and learn together. And I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough of the plugin and I hope it comes in useful to you. Thank you, have a great day.